Greetings, Yankee fans. It's Stacy. How are you? Host of Locked on Yankees. And this is going to be slightly different. This is not going to be a full show. This is probably only going to be about 10 minutes of me ranting about the Yankees. We're doing something different here. It's kind of like a bonus clip for you on YouTube. I even showered for you, only because it's Easter and I was going to be around other people. Otherwise, I don't care about that stuff. So anyway... The Yankees. Let's let's discuss the Yankees. Let's discuss the Yankees. Let's discuss the fact that they can't score, that they can't beat Baltimore. I don't understand what's happening. If someone can explain this to me, I would really appreciate it. That'd be that'd be great. Um, I'm sick of watching this team look absolutely horrible against bad teams. Baltimore is not a good team. They have good players. There are good players on that team, but they're not projected or projected, the correct word, to be a good team. And I don't understand why the Yankees can't do anything against them. Thank God it wasn't a sweep. Because, whew, yeah. Friday night's game was ridiculous. One run in 11 innings, really? Then Saturday, okay. Rain delays, hail delays. <laughs> I had a friend at that game Saturday. She was sitting eight rows behind home plate. Big Yankee fan like me. We've actually been to games together. And she stayed the whole time. And for her, it worked out well. The one time I was at a game where there were tons of rain delays and... Oh, three rain delays? Were there three that night? Aroldis Chapman decided to give up a grand slam to the Angels to allow the Angels to tie the game. And then the Angels pulled ahead. And this was after the Yankees knocked Shohei Otani out of the game in the first inning. <laughs> yeah. So my friend had a better time at her game. Although she did a joke about the fact that it felt like summer when it started and then felt like winter when it ended. That couldn't have been fun. Today's game, not fun. It is Sunday night as I'm recording this. As I said, it's Easter. That's why I'm wearing the colorful glasses today. It's springtime. Woo! And I, I got water in my ear today in the shower. Don't ask how that happened. I still don't know. And I thought that was going to be the most annoying thing to happen to me today. And then I watched the Yankee game. And I watched the eighth inning unfold. <laughs> the bullpen is going to have games like that. I'm not, you know what? I'm not even going to blame Jonathan Lewisaka and Lucas Lecky. It's more Jonathan Lewisaka. He had a really crappy outing and it happens. I am going to blame the offense for spoiling a really good outing by Nestor Cortez Jr. Yes, it was only five innings. Guys aren't going to be pitching more than that the first few weeks of the season because of the truncated spring training and we all knew that coming in he only gave up three hits did not give up a run walked one struck out 12 in five innings he even had an immaculate inning I believe he was the first person to do that this season and what does he have to show for it well they got him a ball I think after the inning from the inning or whatever the hell it was there is his souvenir of the game. You had an immaculate inning in a game in which your offense did absolutely nothing except be inept with runners in scoring position. Did they think Jordan Montgomery was pitching? I can't. I can't with this team. I really can't. I cannot deal with watching them do the same nonsense that they've done since the beginning of the 2020 season. What the hell happened between 2019 and 2020? I liked 2019 much better. Was there some sort of bad juju when Altuve hit the home run off Chapman? Like, I don't understand <laughs> what is going on. It's just so frustrating watching them flailing at pitches that they shouldn't be swinging at hitting balls right at people. And it feels like every single team plays them exactly where they're going to hit the ball. <laughs> like, 
The opposing team apparently has magnets in their gloves. I don't know how that happens. But I'm the most frustrated for Nestor Cortez Jr. And, you know, he won't say anything bad about his teammates. Obviously, he loves his teammates. But, my goodness, this better not be. This 10-game stretch, 5-5, five and five, better not be a microcosm of the season. The way they started was fine. Two out of three against Boston, awesome. A split against Toronto, perfectly acceptable. Even at home, because Toronto's a tough team. But losing two with three against the Baltimore Orioles? The 2022 Baltimore Orioles? It's not even the 2016 Baltimore Orioles. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're doing nothing. Thank goodness for the off day on Monday. Maybe they'll regroup. The other thing is we're 10 games into the season and it feels like Aaron Boone really can't figure out what lineup he wants to use. And I get it. You have matchups and stuff like that. You want to rest guys. Although, I mean, why are you resting guys right before off days? That I don't understand, but it's Aaron Boone and it's the Sunday punt game. But if you're going to punt a game on a Sunday or the last game of the series, do it If you've won the first two games, not split them. And please stop playing Glaber Torres at short. The man doesn't want to play at shortstop. He wants to be second baseman. Keep him there. It took you guys until mid-September of 2021 to realize, you know what? I think Glaber Torres will probably do better if we play him at second. Why are you playing him at short? What are you doing? (laughs) Leave a comment below. Like, tell me how you're feeling after these 10 games, if you're feeling as frustrated as I am. Because, and I'm not one of those people to panic early, because I'm not panicking. This team obviously can play well, hopefully. Um, They have the roster. Hmm. Their problem is not beating up on teams they need to beat up on, like the Orioles. The Orioles aren't going to do anything this season. They might be better than last season, but they're not really going to do much this season. And they have good players, but they don't have everything all together yet. They're still a couple of years away from being contenders. You should be beating teams like that. And your schedule for the rest of the month is pretty easy on paper, But we'll see how it goes on the actual field. It's not the first time the Yankees have started their season series against Baltimore losing two out of three. They did it in 2019. They lost two out of three. I think it was the opening series, wasn't it? And then I don't think they ever lost to them again. (laughs) Didn't they go 17-2 and against them? Something crazy. That was the Gleyber Torres hits home runs against Baltimore seemingly every game. Not really, but he hit like 13 home runs against them. And he sucked the soul out of Gary Thorne's body. Can we get back to those days, guys, please? I miss those days. And 2019 was that year when everyone got hurt and they had 30 guys on the I.L., And guys stepped in and did things that people couldn't believe that they did. And the offense was pretty good and since that season you know 2020 it was kind of strange because it was only 60 games you know I think if they played a full 162 maybe they wouldn't have been as inconsistent I mean they were almost 500 (laughs) in 60 games so yeah that was a rough one and then last year the not beating Baltimore thing they went 11 and 8 against them You can't go 11-8 and against a team that loses as much as Baltimore did in 2021 when your division opponents are beating up on them like you did in 2019. And when you have three legitimate division opponents that are probably going to make the playoffs. What are you doing? Thank goodness for the off day tomorrow. Really, they needed it. We all need it. Like I said, I'm not panicking. I don't believe this team is bad. 
They're just not great right now. It could be a product of spring training being short. But history is kind of scaring me. Because even with the new players that they got, and even with, I don't know, I just, it's the same crap. Same crap, different season for the Yankees. So that's my rant. There will be a full episode tomorrow. I will recap the series in depth, go through certain performances and talk about certain performances. We'll have quotes from the players and Aaron Boone. We will preview. Will we preview the next series? Maybe I'll wait to do that on Tuesday. We might have a minor league update because minor leagues are happening. Anthony Volpe hit a grand slam today and he was actually not doing well. He had a bit of a slump. I think he was like 0 for 12 or something. Heading into something. Was it Friday night or Saturday night? And then he hit a grand slam today. So good for him. Anthony Volpe, the person that the Yankees are banking on to become their star shortstop, which is why they didn't go after Carlos Correa or anyone in the free agent market. (laughs) Oh, there's so many things to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to end this little rant before I start screaming. The Yankees ruined my Easter. And I don't even really celebrate Easter. So... (laughs) How dare you? How dare you? So yeah, tune in tomorrow for a full recap. And, uh, you know, <laughs> just, again, leave leave your feelings about the first 10 games that you've watched so far. Talk about what you don't like, you know, what you are, you're seeing from them that you don't like. Talk about what you do like. Clay Holmes, my God. <laughs> Everyone, when the Yankees traded for him, thought, who is this person? And now he's amazing. He also looks like he could play Clark Kent in a Superman movie. Look at him and let me know if you agree with me. So yeah, I'm sure Aaron Boone will have pearls of wisdom. I didn't look at any of the postgame quotes yet because I was so mad from the game that I didn't want to be even more frustrated because I know... Because he does it all the time when they have a game like this, when you want to bash your head into a wall. And he says, I saw some good things from so-and-so. The only good thing you saw today was Nestor Cortez Jr. That's it. He's the only one you should say good things about. (laughs) The rest of them need to be put into timeout. (laughs) And that's what tomorrow's off day is. So I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Have a good rest of your Sunday. See ya.